church. Good morning. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this time that we have together. Let your anointing be upon this word. <clears throat> Lead us and guide us into all truth. You are all truth. And let your word be appointed unto our heart that it may bring forth that which you have purposed and intended for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 2, um, verses 4 through 6, um, for part 2 of Kingdom Solutions to Management Problems. Kingdom Solutions to Management Problems. <clears throat> This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. Uh, the face of the ground, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Um, kingdom solutions to management problems. We started this last week, and uh, we addressed the issue uh, and talked a little bit about how many times Jesus even talks about um, management. Management. There's numerous stories where Jesus tells parables about managers and management. And at various times, we puzzle over them. Sometimes we like the stories he tells, and sometimes we don't like them. Sometimes we don't like, you know, for example, a story of... Um, you know, those who are called out into the vineyard to go and to work and start early in the morning, and then those who go out at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and then, you know, he gathers them all, the, the uh, vineyard owner gathers them all, and how much does he pay each one? He pays them all the same, right? And... We, you know, we approach that in a couple of different ways. First off, for some folks, they'll look at it and go, see, socialism is the answer to everything, right? Wrong, okay, that's, that's not the point. Or we get mad and we go, hey, you know, what gives? I, now, why is that? You know, it just offends me. The guys who work the longest should get what, what they have coming to them. And here comes these guys, and they signed up. Imagine that. Who does that? And they sign up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and come quitting time, 5 o'clock, they get paid the same amount. And I don't know about you, I mean, what, what kind of operation is Jesus running here in these parables of the kingdom? But I want to look a little bit at Genesis, because we have management principles that start way back there in Genesis. And I think there's some things that are worth looking at. We talked last week and discovered that um, greed does not work. And God doesn't want any part of that. But God has a much better strategy, and it's his God's dominion strategy. And uh, it's much brighter. So if we are to take Genesis chapter 2 and we focus in on those verses, verses 4, uh, and we start looking at verse 5 as it's described, the, the creation, and we substitute before any. See those two words, before any. And what we're going to put in there, and we're going to substitute that with the word no. And let's follow and look at the progression in verse 5. So, 
No plant of the field was in the earth, and no herb or shrub of the field had grown. Well, why? Scripture goes on to say, For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth. So God, what did God do? God held back the rain. And so if God held back the rain, it meant that he held back the plants. And he held back the shrubs. Essentially, there was no life, only dirt and rocks. There was no growth. And whose fault was it? It was God's fault. Yeah. We may not want to admit it, but it was God's fault. There was no growth and it was God's fault because God purposely held up progress. Can you imagine that God would hold up progress? God literally stopped development. Why? Because the last part was the greatest thing that was needed. So he holds everything up until he has the crowning achievement in place. Now remember, all the other days of creation, he, he makes and he says, it's good. But on the day he creates man, what's he say? Very good. It's very good. It's very good. See, the last part was the greatest thing was needed. You go on in the verse, and it says, what was needed? There was no man to till the ground. So what's that mean? To till, well, you can have literally, anybody ever tilled the ground? Okay, so you, you can take that literally, to till it or to farm it, to work the ground. It's all those things and more. But really, how many of you come from agricultural communities in your lives? I'll tell you what, I'm at, uh, you know, I mean, being born and raised in Southern California and then being transplanted to Western New York and encountering a lot of farming and then coming to South Central Pennsylvania and pastoring two churches that were rural, I had a chance to encounter a good bit of agricultural community. And I have to tell you, some of the most, the, some of the brightest people that you could ever meet are folks in agricultural industry, in the farming industry. These are some very bright people. Why? Because they have to know how to manage. And that is really at the core of this term for till. If you're tilling, it, it also means that there was nobody there to manage the earth. So the problem was that there was no man to manage. There was nobody there to manage. Now before ladies you get all upset with me and start throwing shoes at me, I hope you'll listen, hear me out. Man comes and is created in two versions. Okay? There's the male model and the female model. Alright? That's what the scripture talks about. In the Hebrew, the, the, the verses there, the, the words are ish and isha. Those are the two, those are the two words that go along with that. And so God is creating. And so what he needs is he's waiting for the creation of Adam and Eve to get in place. Why? So they can work together and they can manage. So the problem was that there was nobody to work the earth. And because of that, he's going to hold up everything until his crowning achievement is put into place. And this is really God's motivation to make man. Because he needs 
a manager. Now, I know that some of you folks, every Monday morning, you probably get up and you think, let me tell you what, as soon as I get home to glory land, I am going to roll up my sleeves and I am going to go find Adam and I am going to kick him square in the shins because if he hadn't taken a bite of that apple, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have to get up and go to work every Monday. But listen, here we are in the early chapters of Genesis and we understand that even in Genesis chapter 1, what's God doing? He's creating. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. God is a manager. He's separating, separating night from day. He's, God's a manager. And he is creating a manager who can work the ground and who can organize and he can call disorder and chaos into order. And somebody who will help to care for and attend for that which he has created. So God had, God had that on his mind to have managers and for, for humanity to be doing that way before Adam and Eve ever took a bite of an apple. Personally, I don't think it was an apple. I think it was a nice, juicy um, Pennsylvania peach. Personally, I think that I think it was a peach. I could probably be tempted by a nice big juicy peach before I could be tempted by an apple, but but, uh, but that's just me. But nonetheless, God sets these things into place. Management means work. And God's not going to do, not, God's not going to start the process of, of allowing anything to grow until there's a manager in place. Isn't that unfair? Let's all cry a big, big blue tear right now. But that's God's plan. And that's how, I didn't write the rules. It's in the Word. It's how He does it. And you know what? You can, you can take this and you can think of it and look at it in different ways. I used to think, well, you know what? Isn't it, isn't it unfair that God makes some people rich and God makes some people poor? Have you ever thought that? But you can go to God and say to God, why do you make some people rich and some people poor? And God says, listen, I don't make rich people and I don't make poor people. I just make people. It's all in how you manage what you've been given. What have you been given and how do you manage it? And we have all been given any number of resources to manage. I, I mean, I can rattle off story after story of people who come from all kinds of desperate situations and they have managed what they have been given and have built empires out of what they have. They didn't have much, but they made the most out of what they had and God blessed it and they went forward and God used it. See, God will do that. Sometimes we think, you know, management is, a, you know, you know, management is about luck, but it's not about luck. It's, it's what it is. It's about our ability to manage what we have. Sometimes we think, well, the purpose of, of man is to go to church. The purpose of man is to, is to sing in the choir and to do liturgy or to be the pastor, or to do those things. And God says, no, I'm sorry. I didn't create you for the express purpose, for the sole purpose of singing in the choir. I didn't create you for the sole purpose of, of doing liturgy. I hate to tell you that. I created you 
to be a manager and to care for what I have given you. The question is, how are you doing at caring for what I have given to you? And that really is, that's, that's where the rubber hits the road. Amen? How are you caring for what you have been given? It's a question that, that every single one of us have to answer. How many of you are in management? One, two, one, four, five, six, seven. That's good. They fell for it, didn't they, Jack? <laughs> According to, listen. Have you seen this, folks? This is your kingdom manual. It's called the Bible. This is our kingdom manual. This tells us that every single one of us are kingdom managers. Every single one of us are responsible for what God has put into our hands. How many of you are managers? <laughs> God bless you. They got it. Amen. God, and here's the here's a couple of principles. Principles. God wants us. Okay. God will stop growth where there is no manager. And if we are bad managers, God will stop growth. So we, we've got to be good managers of what God's given to us. The next thing is God wants you to dominate the earth through managing what he has given you. All right? The next thing is we all work for the government. Some of you are going like, boy, with the taxes we pay, we sure do. Which government am I talking about? The kingdom government. Yeah, that's right. The kingdom of God. The divine goal of mankind is the extension of heaven on earth. And that requires management. Therefore, we dominate earth through work. You give you five quick or four quick management principles of our kingdom of our kingdom resources. Number one, God protects His resources from bad managers. Number two, God will physically withhold His resources from bad management. Number three, where there is bad management, God will not allow growth. Number four, God never answers a prayer request from anyone who is a bad manager. Okay, I'm going to run through that real quick, and then i got to wrap this up. We're going to have communion together, and I'll get into this a little bit more. So, uh, so we'll have some more fun with this next week. The first principle, God's principles of managing kingdom resources. Number one. God protects his resources from bad management. Number two, God will physically withhold his resources from bad management. Number three, where there is bad management, God will not allow growth. Number four, God never answers a prayer request from anyone who is a bad manager. All right? Now, I hope you wrote those down because I want you to take those back. Now, some of you are working with people. Take those back to your departments and things. Give that a shot. See how well that flies. <laughs> Lord, let's pray. Lord, you called us as stewards and as managers, kingdom managers, to be very responsible with all that you have granted to us. And you have blessed us with a church. You have blessed us with families. You have blessed us with husbands and wives. 
You have blessed us with the community where our church is located. You have blessed us with the workplace where we, where we uh, spend so much of our time. Grant that we would be faithful managers as you have called us to that place. Lord, let your kingdom resources flow as you teach us to be good managers of all that you have given to us. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord is with you always. Let us share the peace of the Lord.